Any questions from the ones that I gave you to try, or from uh, the orbital mechanics homework from last day, or from the gravitation the day before? Any of these that you want me to go over now is your chance to ask. Yo! From lesson five, number three, love to. So from gravitation, lesson three? No, from orbits, lesson three. Okay? Find the speed required to orbit that high above the moon's surface. Okay, I'm going to do my work up here because i got room here. Okay. Are we in orbit? Okay, if they're talking about orbital speed or orbital period or orbital radius, Caitlin, I always start out by going, well, gravity is what's moving me in a circle. And gravity is going to be big G, big M, little m over R squared equals, and since they want orbital speed, I'll use the circular motion equation with the speed in it, the V squared over R. Is that okay so far? And yay, the mass cancels and one of the R's cancels. In fact, I'm going to get Now, I got to be careful which numbers I use. G is good, still going to be 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. We're pretty sure that's constant throughout the universe. We're doing the moon, so what's the mass of the moon? 7.35 times 10 to the 22. Now I need the orbital radius of the moon. What they've given me is the distance above the surface, which is 7 times 10 to the third. But I'm going to add the radius of the moon to that. That's the R that we're using here, yes? Uh, oh, they gave it to me in kilometers. So 1740 times 1,000. 1740 times 1,000. And then plus... 7 times 10 to the third. That's going to be my orbital radius. I'll just keep that on my calculator. So I should be able to go 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 times 7.35 times 10 to the 22 divided by my previous answer. 174. I'll write down the radius before I forget. 1747 and three zeros. Square root of this is the answer is sixteen seventy. So why am I getting something different? I wonder if maybe there's a typo I wonder if they meant to do 7 times 10 to the 4th. Oh, it's kilometers. That's also kilometers. There, I did the same thing. Okay, so the radius is going to be huh, 7 times 10 to the 3rd times 1,000. How about like fix that plus 1740 times a thousand that's your radius eight seven four zero 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 let's fix that eight seven four and four zeros eight seven four and one two three four zeros and now if I'm clever ah there it is click and then square root of that. Ah, there it is, 749. I'll give you everything in meters, by the way. Silly mistake on both our parts, but don't you feel better because I did the same thing? Not sure. I feel kind of dumb now. Oh, okay, fine. Any others? Yeah. From this lesson as well? Sure. So, I talked about it last class, but I'll do it again, I don't mind. 
when it talks about the gravitational field, Katie, it's talking about this, which again is not on your formula sheet, but it's pretty easy to derive. Okay, it's the acceleration that goes with mass. And what they want you to find is this. Now, how fast it's moving, I just derived the equation with Caitlin over there. Uh, I think the speed in orbit was this, big G, big M over R. And you know the mass of the Earth. Katie, what we don't know is the radius of the orbit. We're going to use this, which I'll move over here so I have more room. We're going to use this to find the radius because they told us that G is 8.75, big G, big M over R squared. Could you now cross multiply and get the R squared by itself and then square root? And then that's what will go there. G is 6.67 times 10 to negative 11, mass of the Earth, both of these. And you should be able to, it's a two step question. Okay? Is that all right? And uh, the units are all good this time. Now I'm going to be paranoid and check. Any others? So, Connor, let's pick up where we left off then. Two more questions. Now, we derived escape velocity. I don't actually memorize this equation. I can rederive it if I need to. How do I rederive it? I realize that out at infinity, if we really want to leave the planet, we want to have no more energy left. We want to use it up just perfectly. We want the fuel to have turned out to be just enough Kayla to get us to a potential energy at zero, because that's what we defined out at infinity, and to have come to a stop at the edge of the universe. So your equation starts up by saying your initial energy has to be zero which sounds kind of strange, but actually no, it works out okay because kinetic energy is a half mv squared. Your potential energy on the Earth, because we're going cosmic now, I can't use mgh, is negative, which means when you plus it over, you do get two positive answers. What we're really saying is this. All of your kinetic energy from firing the fuel all at once in one mighty burst has to end up being enough potential energy to get to infinity. And then cross multiply, we get that. So, what is the escape velocity for the Earth? Well, escape velocity is the square root of 2 big G big M over R or R squared over R. Can we leave the Earth? Let's find out. Which are, oh, we're starting out on the Earth's surface, so it's going to be the radius of the Earth, 6.38 times 10 to the 6th, I think, yeah? Is it possible for us to leave our planet's gravitational field and get out to the edge of the universe? What kind of a speed is the Earth's escape velocity? I get uh, 1.12 times 10 to the fourth. Meters per second. Or, Caitlin, about 11,000 kilometers per hour. Can we do that? Yeah, actually we can. Space Shuttle did it all the time. It requires a lot of fuel, and you just keep accelerating and accelerating and accelerating and accelerating and accelerating and accelerating, and eventually you're there, and you can achieve escape velocity. It's what the Apollo rockets did when they went to the moon as well. 
so it's doable but it's a high enough number again it requires enough fuel Joel that it's not easily doable which is why countries and multinational multinational corporations have satellites but you know school district 42 does not have its own satellite way too prohibitively expensive would you expect the escape velocity of the moon to be bigger or smaller or the same think about it if you're not sure look at the equation and kind of ask yourself a little bit hmm let's find out because B says for the moon well it's still going to be the square root of 2 big G M over R. Again, not on your formula sheet, but easy enough to derive, I think. Now it's going to be for the moon. These I don't have memorized, but you have them on your data sheet. So 2, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. What's the mass of the moon? I know we just did it a few minutes ago, but I can't remember. I missed the first number, sorry. 7.35. Okay, Brianna, what's the mass of the moon? 7.35 times 10 to the 22 over, and what's the radius of the moons? To the sixth? I was going, wait a minute, that's bigger than the Earth. Now I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to go backspace because all I need to change is the mass of the planet here is going to be 7.35 to the 22, 1, 7, 4 times 10 to the 6th square root. Oop. Way smaller. This is why if the technology ever evolves the idea of putting a base on the moon would make much more economical sense if we're planning on exploring outer space because launching from there here's the only problem is there a lot of fuel and oil on the moon you still have to get any of the fuel from the earth up to the moon so i think actually the energy saving i mean no matter what you're still lifting that mass from the earth and burning the fuel to get it from the earth unless we found some way to well, this is why they were interested in finding water on the moon, because water we can turn into fuel. We can break it up into hydrogen and oxygen pretty easily. Maybe. Maybe in your lifetimes. Uh, 2.37. Oh, heck. 2,370 meters per second. So way smaller. Which makes sense, because are you lighter on the moon or heavier on the moon? If you're lighter on the moon, I would assume it would take less energy to leave its gravitational field, right? Hasn't got as strong a gravitational field. Meteors. Every day the Earth is hit by dozens, probably hundreds, of meteorites. They're called meteors, I think, when they're out in outer space, but once they hit the atmosphere and start burning up, they're called meteorites. And most of them burn up in the atmosphere. At night, we call them shooting stars. And there's two main times a year when there's lots of them because the Earth is passing through essentially a giant dust cloud. And so we're clearing a path through the dust by burning it on our atmosphere. Uh, I think in August and I think in December, but I have to go look it up. And have you ever gone meteor start shower watching at night somehow? Sometimes they can be spectacular. I saw one a couple of years ago. I was out sailing and out on the ocean. There's one. It took about six seconds to get across the whole sky and really lit up the whole sky. I was like, wow, that was that was way cool. Is there anybody who has never seen a shooting star ever? Emily? No, I saw that. I saw you looking around. And, oh, I don't want to be you. So you've all seen them, right? They're not stars. They're meteorites. We call them shooting stars. Did you make a wish? Because I'm sorry, it won't help. But still, you can. Okay. What's this question asking us to find, Jacob? I 
how fast? I'm, I'm going to contradict you. Probably it's actually going to be a speed. We're going to solve this probably with energies, in all, in all honesty. Okay? Now, this is asking for how fast a speed, but are we in orbit, in a stable orbit? Read the question carefully. How can you tell we're not in a stable orbit? Connor, it's going to hit, hit the ground. Okay, so I am not, I'll write this down, don't write this down. I am not going to start out by going this, because we are not in a stable orbit. Do we have a change in height? Yeah? And we have a change in speed? This is a job for conservation of energy. This is a job for us to say, the amount of kinetic energy at the beginning and the amount of potential energy at the beginning is going to be equal to the amount of kinetic energy at the end and the amount of potential energy at the end. It says released, so I think my initial speed is zero. Is my initial potential energy zero? No. Is my final kinetic energy zero? In fact, I think that's going to have the V final that I'm going to solve for, Andrew. What about my final potential energy? Now, if we were not going cosmic, if we were using MGH, we would define zero to be at the ground. But because we're going cosmic, zero is defined at the center of the planet. So my final potential is not zero either. In fact, Connor, it's going to look like this. Negative big G, big M, little m, all over my initial. There's my cosmic potential energy equation equals a half m v final squared plus negative big G big M little m all over our final. Where our final is going to be the radius of the earth our initial is my initial radius up in outer space. Oop, it's going to be that plus the Earth's radius. Now, 6,300, not really all that big. Let's drop it from a bit more serious height. Cross out the 6,300 and make it 63,000, 63 kilometers up. How fast will you be going? And we're going to ignore air resistance. Oh, Nicole, is there a little m in this expression? Yeah. Is there a little m in this expression? Yeah. Is there a little m in this expression? Yeah. Well, can you tell me what little m's then? Which is nice. They didn't need to tell me how. In other words, the mass doesn't affect how fast it's going to be going on impact. The mass affects how much damage it does witness the extinction of the dinosaurs. What are we trying to find, Jacob? That. Okay. Uh, I'm going to plus this over to this side. Multiplying by a half on this side is the same as what over on this side? Timesing by two. Okay? So really I can go like this. Vf squared equals negative two big G big M over R initial plus two big G big M over R final. Is that okay, Arvinder? And how to get rid of a squared. I don't think I'm going to try typing this in into one fell swoop, though. I'm going to type this, press equals, type this, press equals, add them together on my calculator, and square root the answer, because that's a lot of typing. Let's plug in numbers first. V final is going to be great big square root sign, Mr. D. Negative 2, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. 5.98 times 10 to the 24th. All over 
Now, my initial radius was 63,000 meters up, but then don't forget to add the radius of the Earth, Andrew. Right? Plus 2, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, 5.98 times 10 to the 24th, all over. My final radius is going to be 6.38 times 10 to the 6th clear negative 2 times 6.67 the negative 11 times 5.98 the 24th divided by bracket 63,000 plus 6.38 times 10 to the 6th. That's how much, I was going to say that's how much potential energy I have up in orbit. That's actually not true because we canceled the M's out, but that's this first number. The second number is going to be the same thing, but ditch the negative. Dunk. And delete the 63,000. Thunk. Oh, and Sean, you know what? I'm going to get really clever. Am I supposed to add these two together? Plus my previous answer. Ah, eh? That should automatically add that number to this number. Thunk. Square root. Dunk. Moving pretty fast. Basically a kilometer a second. 1,100. 1 1.1 1 .1 times 10 to the third meters per second. Yeah. Is it just a coincidence that's final minus initial? Hmm. Listen to the boy who's trying hard to suck up for being late and impress me. Let's see. By the way, what is final minus initial? So are you saying that all of the potential energy that you lose becomes kinetic energy that you gain? And would that not make sense in our, the, our understanding of the universe? You know what? I don't think it's just coincidence. I probably, in fact, see this equation right here? Don't write this down. Now, I should be a little bit careful. Whatever you gain, you lose. And whatever you lose, you gain. What's change in anything? What's changed in anything? But negative would be initial minus final. Um, could I plus the initial to this side and plus that to that side? And do I now have that equation? Oh, cool. I usually jump straight to here because it's not a hard one for me to remember. All of the energy before equals all of the energy after. But yeah. Moving pretty fast. Now, how do I know for this one that it's not a work question? Do you notice there's a change in the height and we're wanting a final speed? It's not saying how much work. How do I know this isn't an orbital radius FG equals FC question? Because a change in height and we're not in orbit. How do I know Connor's going to stay awake? I have no idea. You going to make it? I don't think so. Okay. So, what's your homework? I already assigned one, two, and three. Try seven. I already assigned eight, nine, and ten. Try thirteen. And then, here's the deal. 